Jeff Greenfield joins us now. Jeff, thanks for being with us. This book really offers a, a series of interesting concepts and questions. What made you want to write this? Um, p political junkies always sit around late at night and do what if. Um, and in, in this case, a, p a question asked at a panel about what would have happened had Robert Kennedy lived, somebody I worked for the last year of his life as a you know, junior kind of speechwriter, somehow triggered a very different answer from my normal one, which was, well, we, we'll never know. Mm -hmm. um, I'd read a book that said that Mayor Daley, Richard Daley of Chicago, was going to endorse Bobby if he won the California primary. And I s said, gee, if that had happened, the anti-war demonstrators in Chicago, most of them wouldn't have been there because Daley would have been on their side. Mm -hmm. And that got me thinking about that's right, and if he'd survived the assassination, just like Reagan did in 1981, mm -hmm. there'd been this enormous goodwill and relief, and it would have changed the whole dynamic of his fight for the nomination. And I went home that night after this panel, and I, 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 the, the brain just kept me up all night and started thinking about, well, what would have Johnson, what would Lyndon Johnson have done, who hated Robert Kennedy, they hated each other. Mm -hmm. What would have happened? Could he have beaten Nixon if he got the nomination? What kind of president would he have made? Did a lot of research on that and other scenarios in here, talk to people who knew these figures, read oral histories, to make this as grounded in reality as possible, but taking us down a very different path than the history we lived through or read about. Yeah, it's really fascinating because, you know, sometimes it's not a huge thing that could really throw the course of history off, but you write about a gaffe that President Gerald Ford made during a debate before the 1976 election, mm -hmm. and we have some sound. Let's take mm -hmm. a listen to that. There is no Soviet domination of Eastern Europe, and there never will be under a Ford administration. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I want, I, could I just follow? Did I understand you to say, sir, that the Russians are not using Eastern Europe as their own sphere of influence and occupying mo most of the countries there and, and, and making sure with their troops that it's, a, that it's a communist zone, whereas on our side of the line, the Italians and the French are still flirting with I don't believe... Mr. All right, so you say that was a turning point in the 1976 election, which Carter won, but had Ford won, do we ever see Ronald Reagan? Well, you're, you're getting ahead of yourself, uh, but that's a very good question. Yeah. That gaffe cost Ford's campaign a week uh, of backing and filling until he finally said, I, I misspoke. Instead of doing, as I suggested in my alternate history, he just said, oh, Max Frankel, I know they're militarily dominated by the Soviet Union. If he'd have won 10,000 or 11,000 more votes in Ohio and about 5,000 more votes in Mississippi, Ford would have been elected in the Electoral College. Remember 2000, mm -hmm. where you don't have right. to win the popular vote. <laughs> and my, my history, my alternate history, says that I think the economic calamities of the late 1970s, the massive inflation, the gas lines, the industrial recession, would have happened under either Ford or Carter. That means, as you asked, in 1980, in this version of history. Ronald Reagan's not running against an unpopular Democratic incumbent. He's running against an unpo or to succeed a po an unpopular Republican lame duck. And I suggest that it would have been a much tougher road for Reagan than, than it actually was. So, and it all would have, that all stemmed from kind of a, a failure to correct himself. Um, the first story is the one that um, no uh, history, a real history that nobody remembers, which is that John Kennedy almost was killed in Palm Beach, Florida, before he ever got to be president. Right, I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, yeah. what if that would have actually happened? Well, we were, we were, according to the Secret Service, seconds away. There was a man in a parked car with seven sticks of dynamite, uh, an anti-Catholic, uh, obviously a lunatic, uh, crazed about the Kennedy family and the church. And the only reason he didn't kill Kennedy was that Jacqueline came to the door to see, see him off to church. Uh, had he, she not come to the door, you know, she'd had a difficult childbirth just then, we would never have had a President Kennedy. It would have been Lyndon Johnson from the beginning, and it would have been Lyndon Johnson in the Cuban Missile Crisis, who, yeah. think, who thought very differently about stuff than John Kennedy did. It is just fascinating how these just little moments in time can just really change, as we've been talking about, the course of history. But as you look back and, and you, you try to ground this in your knowledge and, you know, historic basis, what do you say to people say, you know, Jeff, look, you're all wrong. That couldn't have happened. That wouldn't have happened. The book is just out, so they ha the, the critics haven't had a chance to um, marshal. Actually, uh, an otherwise really neat review in the Times said my scenario about what happens in Iran is ridiculous, and I'm prepared to say, no, it's not. But I love that idea. I mean, in some sense, I want this book to start arguments, because mm -hmm. you can come up with your own alternate histories, but all I ask anybody who does that is go do your research. 
tell me if you think I'm wrong, I just want to know why. You know, what do you ground your version in, and I know what I ground mine in. Mm -hmm. Hey, if nothing else, it gets people talking, right? And thinking, most importantly. That's, that would be good. <laughs> we all need a little more of that, don't we? All right, Jeff Greenfield, CBS News senior political correspondent. This is a fascinating read, and I do appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.